in this slide let's briefly look at what do we mean by message switching in message switching the messages are stored and relayed from one switching center to the next center it is obsolete now of course it was used in unintelligent communications such as telegraphy this is a store and relay system look at the figure so message switching is best known by the term store and forward in message switching there is no direct link between the sender and the receiver message switching offers the possibility of greatly improved economy a source sends a message m1 from switching center a to d via c in this example in your figure now the path is a c d it can very well be a b d at some other time at c m1 will be stored in a buffer and kept in a messaging queue by a processor the messages therefore will have a source header and a destination header then after storage and possible delay the message will go from c to d and then possibly to further destinations obviously the switching centers need large capacity storage media messages also suffer store and forward delay however please note in message switching network the transmission links are never idle and are always fully utilized this was a forerunner to the modern packet switching in computers which is used in lan wan internet and so on the modern message switching is of course sms let us look at circuit switching in this slide what do we mean by circuit switching during a call a dedicated path will exist between users for the entire distance and for the entire duration of a call in other words one route is nailed down for maybe hundreds of kilometers and maybe even for hours together this is circuit switching in telecommunications a circuit switching network is one that establishes a circuit or a path or a channel between nodes switches exchanges and terminals before the users may start communicating it is like an electrical circuit where a path needs to exist and be energized circuit switching suffers signal attenuation circuit switching uses fixed bandwidth it is used for mainly voice and data the billing is as per the usage time and some of the examples of circuit switching are the famous pstn virtual private network and so on circuit switching can again be time switched or space switched we'll see them in detail in a short while advantages excellent quality can be assured disadvantages could be a very precious resource running into millions of rupees is wasted just on one pair of users therefore the tariff will be higher if only more people can share the same resource and have several conversations or several data sessions simultaneously the tariff can be shared and brought down examples will be lan vivo ip and so on in this slide let's briefly look at what do we mean by message switching in message switching the messages are stored and relayed from one switching center to the next center it is obsolete now of course it was used in unintelligent communications such as telegraphy this is a store and relay system look at the figure so message switching is best known by the term store and forward in message switching there is no direct link between the sender and the receiver message switching offers the possibility of greatly improved economy a source sends a message m1 from switching center a to d via c in this example in your figure now the path is a c d it can very well be a b d at some other time at c m1 will be stored in a buffer and kept in a messaging queue by a processor the messages therefore will have a source header and a destination header then after storage and possible delay the message will go from c to d and then possibly to further destinations obviously the switching centers need large capacity storage media messages also suffer store and forward delay however please note in message switching network the transmission links are never idle and are always fully utilized this was a forerunner to the modern packet switching in computers which is used in lan wan internet 
and so on. The modern message switching is, of course, SMS. Let us look at circuit switching in this slide. What do we mean by circuit switching? During a call, a dedicated path will exist between users for the entire distance and for the entire duration of a call. In other words, one route is nailed down for maybe hundreds of kilometers and maybe even for hours together. This is circuit switching. In telecommunications, a circuit switching network is one that establishes a circuit or a path or a channel between nodes, switches, exchanges and terminals before the users may start communicating. It is like an electrical circuit where a path needs to exist and be energized. Circuit switching suffers signal attenuation. Circuit switching uses fixed bandwidth. It is used for mainly voice and data. The billing is as per the usage time. And some of the examples of circuit switching are the famous PSTN, virtual private network and so on. Circuit switching can again be time switched or space switched. We will see them in detail in a short while. Advantages, excellent quality can be assured. Disadvantages could be a very precious resource running into millions of rupees is wasted just on one pair of users. Therefore, the tariff will be higher. If only more people can share the same resource and have several conversations or several data sessions simultaneously, the tariff can be shared and brought down. Examples will be LAN, Vivo IP and so on. Let us look at packet switching in this slide. If one resource can be shared by several users, for voice conversations and data sessions, the tariff will come down. We have seen this already while dealing with circuit switching. This necessitates that we have to resort to sending the signals in packets than continuous mode, just as we do in LANs in a computer network. This is packet switching and this technology when extended to voice becomes the modern Vivo IP or VoIP, voice over internet protocol technology. What is packet switching? It is a digital network communication which employs packets. Packets group all the data that need to be transmitted into suitably sized blocks. These packets are transmitted over a common shared network. Each packet is routed independent of others. The principal goals of packet switching are to use the available link capacity efficiently, minimize delays, and increase the robustness of communication. At every junction or node, such as routers, switches, etc., packets are buffered and queued. This results in variable delay and throughput and often depends on traffic load in the network. What are the advantages? Packet switching shares a link more effectively and consequently the user tariff for services comes down. Disadvantages? Variable delay and non-real-time communication. The quality is marginally inferior to that of circuit switching and is soon catching up with circuit switching quality. The famous examples of packet switching are the Internet Protocol and Transmission Control Protocol, popularly known as IP and TCP. Refer to this figure. A typical packet is shown. It will have a header the payload or the actual message which needs to be conveyed to another user, a cyclic redundancy, check bits to detect errors in reception and ask for a recent if necessary. The header will have a source address where the packet comes from, a destination address where the packet needs to go, an opcode, a message control identifier, a sequence number of the packet and a byte count. The animation tells you how packet switching and circuit switching do take place.
look at the circuit switching versus packet switching summary in this graphical form. Some of the existing technologies are tabulated above. The transfer modes can be circuit switching or packet switching. Consequently, the connection types can be connection oriented or connectionless respectively. Please note that four combinations are mapped along with the technologies in use today. It's a beautiful slide and the reader is advised to spend some time and have a look at it.